Hi all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ollie and this is Simply Stitchy. And I've got a bit of a dilemma this week. I have been sewing for so many years now and I've owned so many sewing machines. In fact, I've still got quite a few sewing machines. And something that came up on a Facebook forum just recently got me to thinking about something that I've never even given a minute's thought to before. Should I have been thinking about it? Have I been causing unnecessary suffering to my poor collection of sewing machines? Am oh, I a terrible owner? It's probably not something that you've given a lot of thought to either. The subject of today's video? Should you be storing your sewing machine with your presser foot up or down? Now some of the feedback on Facebook and on the sewing forums have come back to say that you should always keep your sewing machine stored with the foot down. Some people even go as far as to say um, you should put a piece of fabric in between the lowered foot and the feed dogs and yet others say that you should put the presser lever down and take the foot off. Which kind of clears up a little bit of a mystery that I've been wondering about over the last few months. Why there are so many sewing machines in thrift stores that are missing their feet? Now I know it's because people have been taking the feet off to store their sewing machines. To me this question is a little bit like whether you should be saying scones or scones and whether you should be putting the jam on first or the cream. To be honest I've always preferred eating them that's the scones, not the presser feet. In an attempt to answer this question once and for all, I decided that I'd do a little bit of digging. Now, I'd like to say that I was sat here doing the digging while eating or munching on some scones, but to be honest with you, it was jam donuts. I have been reading through all the sewing machine manuals that I own, for all the sewing machines that I've got. I've even done a quick search through my computer's hard drive to find all the sewing machine manuals that I've downloaded over the years. And I've come across quite a few manuals for sewing machines that I've never owned. I have no idea why I've got those. But the one thing that they've all got in common, whether they be vintage manuals or modern day manuals, not one of them mentions how you should store a sewing machine. What all the manuals do say in pretty much near enough the same wording is how to sew with your sewing machine which kind of makes sense so we've got a little bit of an anomaly here sewing machine manufacturers don't expressly mention it in their manuals which kind of suggests to me that they don't really mind and yet sewing repair people recommend you store your machine with a foot down and a piece of fabric underneath it. In fact there are an awful lot of people on the forums and Facebook groups who say they were actually taught to store the machines that way when they first started sewing with them. I must have missed that week because nobody mentioned it when I first started sewing. Now the reason sewing machine repair people um, say to store it with the foot down is because it takes the pressure off the pressure lever spring. I can hear you saying, what's that? I'm glad you asked because I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you on my Singer 128K. Here she is. Now as you can see I've taken the, the face plate off so that we can see the inner workings. Here's the presser foot lever uh, it raises and lowers the presser foot and as you can see if you watch this little spring, this little large spring, um, it stretches when the presser foot goes down and contracts when the pressure foot goes up. And it's that contraction that sewing machine repairers say that you should have if you're storing your machine because apparently that takes the pressure off the spring. Your idea. Every sewing machine I own, whether it be vintage, antique or modern, I store with a press foot up. The reason why I do that is because that's where it ends up 
After I've finished sewing with the sewing machine, I'll lift the presser foot, turn the hand wheel or push the needle up and down button to lift the needle up, pull the fabric out and put it away, the sewing machine and the fabric. That's how I've always done it. Um, I've never had a problem with the presser lever spring. I've never had a problem with um, anything getting stuck, whether it's up, down, in the middle, whatever. Better still, I've never lost a sewing machine foot because they're usually always left on the machine. I kind of feel like I'm swimming against the tide here, so I thought I was going to settle this question once and for all and get a definitive answer one way or the other. So what did I do? I went to the source to get the information straight from the horse's mouth as it were. I contacted my three favourite sewing machine brands who just happen to be three of the most popular brands in the world and I started with Singer. This is the Singer Simple. This is a great machine for a beginner. It's got built-in stitches and it's a doddle to use. And this is the response I got back from Singer. Now Singer have been making sewing machines since 1851. So if anyone is gonna know whether you should be storing your sewing machines with a pedal down or up, it's gonna be Singer. I'll read you what they said. Good afternoon, Ollie. Thank you for contacting Singer. I am more than happy to assist. We do recommend that the needle stroke presser foot is in the down position when not in use. It's merely for protection from curious kids and pets so they don't get poked. However, either way, it's just fine. It's personal preference. Okay, so reading into that, what Singer suggests you do is you keep both the presser foot and the needle in the down position so that inquisitive little fingers can't get their fingers caught under the sharp pointy bit of the needle. But in actual fact, they don't particularly mind whether the foot's up or down as far as the machine's concerned because it doesn't make any difference. Next up, Janome. This is Jerome. He's a QC6260. He's actually discontinued now, but he's one of my all-time favourite machines. Um, Janome have been in the sewing machine business since 1921, which means this year is their centennial. Happy birthday, Janome. Now, I sent them an email too. I actually sent the email to Janome America because I'm in the USA at the minute. They asked for a serial number for the machine that I was talking about and that would have identified Jerome as a UK model because he is. So they forwarded me to Janome UK and this is the response that I got. Good morning, Ollie. Janome America have forwarded your inquiry to us. There is no right way to position the presser foot when storing the machine. Our technicians have confirmed that you can leave the foot up or down and it will not cause any undue pressure while the machine is not in use. We recommend storing the machine away from heat and direct sunlight and protecting the machine with a dust cover. So there you go. That's Janome. Last, but by no means least, Brother. Now, Brother aren't technically a sewing machine company as such. Brother are actually a technology company um, and their forte lies in embroidery machines and combination machines, machines that can do more than one thing like um, sewing and quilting combos or sewing and embroidery combos for instance. Let's see what they have to say. Thank you for your email. Ooh, a little bit formal. We recommend storing the machine with a foot down with a piece of felt underneath and turning the hand wheel until the needle touches the fabric. Are you having any issues with your machine? Now, that's the first company that's asked me if I've actually had a problem with the machine. If not, continue to sort, store the machine with your presser foot lowered. Thank you again for emailing us. If we can be of any further assistance, please let us know. Okay, that's brother. So, basically what they're saying is you use a piece of felt um, felt's got a long history with sewing machines. It's actually the stuff that you use to stop friction underneath um, your reel of thread on the thread spool. So we put the felt 
under the foot, put the foot down and lower the needle until it touches the fabric. So they recommend storing the machine like this. Now it's interesting to me that they've actually specified that you use felt and not just any old fabric. Um, the thing with felt is it's actually it's quite a thick fabric so it's going to add a bit of cushioning underneath the foot so I can see the logic in it. So there you have it. Two out of the top three sewing machine brands available today say doesn't make any difference at all whether you store your machine with a press foot down or up. It's up to you. It's personal preference. Whatever floats your boat really. The one thing that I did find when it comes to storing sewing machines was on the Singer website. They recommend that that first time that you bring the sewing machine back out of storage before you even start to sew on it make sure you give it a service make sure you check that it's in good working order still. Do you know me? I said in the email that I got back from them, the best way of storing a sewing machine is away from direct sunlight, away from heat sources and with a dust cover so that it doesn't get dust in its tiny little places. One of the main things that I try and do when I'm storing um, sewing machines, particularly the vintage ones, is I'll make sure that I've cleaned all the lint, all the cotton, all the debris from sewing out of the, um, the feed dogs and that kind of thing. And I'll make sure that if it's a machine that needs oiling, I've oiled it. And if it's being stored long term, every so often I'll take that machine out and I'll just give it a quick check just to make sure that everything's still okay. And if the oil needs topping up, I'll top the oil up. I hope that's cleared up the confusion about whether you should store your sewing machine with the presser foot up or down and I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Why not subscribe to my channel and click that little bell so that YouTube can give you a notification next time I upload another video. And how about checking out some of the other videos I've got on my channel. There's some links coming up around about now of some of the other videos um, and content that I've got available for you to watch at the moment. Whichever video you go and check out next, I hope to see you back here for the next one. In the meantime, whatever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing with, embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.